uh, because I, I, I watched your video, I read your newsletter, I concur with it, and but you had the courage to come out and tell the truth. Uh, now I think it's time to just focus on two fronts. How do we politically try to reverse this, A, but B, hope for the best, prepare for the worst? How do we individually protect ourselves? Well, okay. Uh, the, the answer to the first question is, uh, as you probably know, I'm certainly not a political analyst. You know, the politics of this country and the, all the uh, lobbying and everything that goes on, I really, truly do not understand, except for I see how corrupt it is and I want to just stay away from it. But if you wanted to solve our problems, and I have no doubt that our politicians could care less about solving our problems, all they want is more power. But if you wanted to solve our problems, you need three things, okay? Number one, you got to have sound money, and that means gold and silver-backed currency. Number two, you got to have a balanced budget amendment. Why? Because it's morally reprehensible to pass on our debts to our children and our grandchildren. It's, and it's just common sense. You can't go on forever borrowing money. Everyone should know that. And uh, the, 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 um, the number three thing I believe we need, and I think this is probably going to be unpopular by uh, some of your listeners, but I believe we've got to have it, and I want to explain why. We have to have a flat tax. I don't care if it's a flat sales tax. I don't care if it's a flat income tax. We have to have a, a provision that will prevent the progressive nature of the income because tax. Because we spend 400 plus billion just on the CPAs a year. I agree with the flat tax. The problem is they're going to give us a flat tax and keep the income tax. You watch. I, I, I agree with that, and I understand that. I'm not advocating that. But here's, but, but the fact is, is that progressive income taxes have allowed politicians to say for years and years and years and years, I can give you benefits that you won't have to pay for them because we will make the rich pay. Folks, it's a lie. If you took 100% of the income of everyone in this country who earns more than a quarter of a million dollars a year, if you took all of it, all of their income, we would still have a deficit. It's, people vote in a different way when they don't have to pay the bill. And that's why every American should pay the same rate of tax. It's not because the rich don't aren't going to pay more. They're still going to pay a lot more. But the fact is, is you're going to vote differently when you realize that you will have to pay the bill. There is no Santa Claus. There's, there is no way to get something for nothing. Paper money doesn't work. It leads to inflation. Eventually, it leads to default and collapse. America, you got to grow up. I've, I've heard I've heard from some subscribers raging about how any cut to Social Security or Medicare should be off the table. Look, if we don't cut Medicare and Social Security benefits, our entire country will be bankrupt in 10 years. That's not an exaggeration. That's a fact. So people who claim they are owed something by our government are the same kind of people who invested in Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff might owe them money. That might be absolutely the truth, but it's irrelevant because Bernie Madoff was a lie and a con. And the same thing is true about the benefits you've been promised by our government. They cannot be delivered. Porter, um, now let's shift gears because I skipped this network break to continue this information so important. Continue with now solutions, how we individually protect ourselves. And I understand it's in the newsletter. Folks can find that in the free video at endofamericavideo.com. People need this information, endofamericavideo.com. There's so much info in that hour-long video. But, but I mean, specifically, uh, and I understand it varies individual to individual. Absolutely. But, uh, but, 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 but yeah. basics. Sure, basics. Three main ideas. Number one, put yourself on a gold standard. And by that I mean, you know, uh, for your for your liquid savings, take your money out of the bank, put it in gold and silver bullion. Uh, number two, if you are a person of means, invest in real estate overseas. Get money out of the U.S. and get it out of the U.S. in a way that is not tracked by the U.S. government. So you do not have to report foreign holdings of real estate. You do have to report foreign holdings of almost every other type. So buy foreign real estate if you want to get a million bucks outside the U.S. Why would you want to get it outside the U.S.? Because believe me, the only way to pay these bills, and after the default happens, you're going to see a lot of new rules about moving money around. The government is going to try some massive wealth tax where they're going to require you to pay some percentage of your net worth and send it to Washington, D.C. That's the only possible way after we default to, avoid, to, re, to regain stability in our country, and they're going to try to take it out of the highs of wealthy people. That's the only way to do it. So um, gold and silver for yourself, uh, foreign real estate if you're, um, if you're wealthy. And uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a third thing that my newsletter really specializes in is figure out how to use this crisis to make some extra money for yourself. So, sure, we've, we've done well speculating in silver. But as you know, in the past, we've also done very well by shorting select stocks that are very exposed to higher interest rates, very exposed to currency fluctuations. And 
we're going to continue to do the same thing for our readers going forward. Well, I was reading when you were writing four or five years ago, you were predicting all of this because of the clear move towards fiscal irresponsibility, monetization of debt. Uh, they weren't slowing down. They were accelerating. You talked about food production, raw materials, rare earth minerals, farmland. Now look at the speculators. They figured it out late. They're rushing in. Those prices are going up across the board. They'll probably still go up more. But what a what an even better investment if they'd have listened to you four years ago or if folks would have listened to us 11 years ago when silver was $5 and I should get into it, when gold was 260 and I should get into it. And uh, But I also see a reverse psychology, Porter, where some people, and I've got some uh, extended relatives that I see a few times a year, and, and, and they'll make jokes that I told them buy gold at 300. They'll make jokes, and I'll say, well, I still advise you to buy gold and silver. And they go, oh, you advise, and they'll start laughing at me, and I'm like, What's funny about gold up 450%, silver up 750% plus? I mean, how in America, with some people, is it evil to be right, evil to be accurate, you know, more than the mainstream media, because uh, they're being, you know, inaccurate on purpose? Is it that they don't like the fact that they were wrong, and so they still want to play a mental game with themselves that you're wrong? Uh, you know, it's one of the craziest things that I have seen in my career. Uh, in the fall of 2008, my firm was the only research firm in America that had been, that had predicted almost everything that happened almost exactly, exactly as it did. You know, we predicted the bankruptcy of General Motors, of Lehman, of Bayer, the, fair, the failure of Merrill. I said in June of 2008 that Fannie and Freddie would go to zero, and that's exactly what happened. And yet, at, at, in November of 2008, we had a record number of refund demands because people hadn't listened to us they hadn't taken our advice and they were mad at us because of it and so they wanted their subscription money back it's hard to believe but it's exactly what happened and and not only that but i had i had hundreds of letters from people telling me that because i was warning about the, the bankruptcy of general motors i was responsible for it there's this there's some idea in our country that if you write about something that's going to happen you are promoting it for Oh, I get it every day. Newspapers in the last week have said that 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 I am causing pessimism porn. That 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 I and others are responsible. It's the Federal Reserve, ladies and gentlemen. It's the tens of trillions. But no, it's Porter Stansbury's fault. It's Gerald Salente's fault. It's Alex Jones's fault. It's 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 Ron Paul's fault. No, it is not our fault. We warned you about the pit out in the field. We didn't make you go out there and fall into it. That's right. That's right. You know, uh, Alex, if I can just give you one one quick fact, and this is every time I'm writing my newsletter or writing a report, and I'm thinking. You know, am I sure I have this right? What I'm about to say sounds pretty extreme. Do I really have the facts to back this up? There is now $681,000 in debt per U.S. family. That's total debt in our country. $681,165, to be precise, debt per U.S. family. Can you? How many families do you know that can finance $681,000 in debt? Maybe 2%. It's in, what, we, what we're facing as a nation is completely impossible. You cannot make the math work. And this is exactly what the bankers want. And we're going to hold you over a little bit in the next hour. But the best place to watch the free video and to find links to all the different newsletter products, endofamericavideo.com, endofamericavideo.com. Very, very simple, easy, endofamericavideo.com. It is up there right now. For you, and uh, I feel really good telling folks to buy silver and gold. I feel good telling folks to get storable food. I feel good 10 years ago saying get a farm. I've now finally done it. Small, tiny thing in nine acres, but a place to, you know, be safe. The point is, is that it is now time to protect yourselves, and there's no silver bullet. Nothing's perfect. None of us are God or omnipresent, but I'm telling you, I read the newsletter. The stuff in there is invaluable. Endofamericavideo.com. Check it out today. A little more uh, time with Porter Stansbury. Straight ahead. Stay with us. All right. Five more minutes with Porter Stansbury. Maybe we'll do 20 more. I mean, I've just got so much to do here at the office. I know he's busy. Drudge Report is uh, linked and really slowing InfoWars right now. We've been trying to beef the servers up. Uh, Miss America sexually molested by TSA. Got to continue the fight uh, against that slave training that's going on. She said they really grabbed her, her private parts hard.
Uh, just unbelievable that that's happening. Uh, you know, Porter Stansbury, the system is setting up this police state knowingly ahead of the financial collapse. And we've now gotten army documents that told us what we already knew, that for a decade they've, they've known that this derivatives-connected, Glass-Steagall-connected uh, collapse was coming. So they've cold-bloodedly set this up to, to destroy the middle class, give themselves more power, and then they'll pose as the saviors. And I know we go back to the political issue uh, and and then you're like, look, all I'm saying is I know I can help people pr try to protect themselves, uh, but the two do go together. I mean, it's so horrible to see this road we're going down. And are you encouraged, though, or, or do you agree that we've seen a massive shift in media to where more and more they're having to admit that the straits are dire? That's a great question, Alex. I think that the numbers are so big now. That even, you know, sort of the most naive newspaper journalist who, who doesn't know anything about finance is having a hard time, you know, coming up with a way to explain it. You, you see what I'm saying? I mean, can you remember there was a time when a trillion-dollar annual deficit was a, a, a crisis? You know, in 2008, Congress almost didn't pass the financial bailout because it was going to mean a trillion-dollar deficit, and everyone was terrified what that would mean for the dollar. And now, trillion-dollar deficits are just... No, no, no big deal. We've had we've had a trillion dollar deficit for three years in a row. We're going to have a trillion dollar deficit for at least the next three years. No one cares anymore. It's almost like the entire the entire monetary system in America is spinning out of control, and that's exactly what's happening. So I think it's just that the facts are so bad, the numbers are so bad that the lies aren't going to cover it anymore. So they're kind of backed in the corner of having to say, "Hey, you know what? Maybe this isn't sustainable." Hmm. But then they push austerity on the welfare moms and unions uh, and the poor, some of it who can't survive without it. And I look at all the numbers, you could get rid of, of their entitlements, and it's not going to fix it. This thing is so huge. What do we do? Just just tell the big central banks, look, we're not going to pay for your derivatives? I mean, is that the start of it? Uh, you know, I definitely think that bailing out the banks was an enormous, enormous decision graceful decision that was made. I, I agree completely with you on that on that issue. And what I'm saying is, look, why can't somebody, isn't, isn't the president supposed to be honest with the American people? Aren't, isn't the Republican Party supposed to be the, the, the party of fiscal responsibility? Where is the leader in America who will stand up and tell the American people the truth? We are broke, Alex. If we continue to spend this way, prices are going to just continue to go up. That doesn't help anybody. You, you know, you think, oh yeah, we got to keep giving the money to the welfare moms and all that stuff. And, hey, that is probably a social obligation we should live up to. But we have to pay for it. We can't just print it. That's not going to help them. No, no, I hear you. But but then if some of the welfare moms, we've seen it in, in, in cases like L.A., I mean, if they don't get those checks for a couple of weeks, cities are going to burn. Oh, and that was one of my, that's my biggest warning to people. There are 45 million people on food stamps, Alex. If we don't get the corn crop in the ground because the weather's so bad right now in the Midwest, they can't get it in the ground, what the heck is going to happen? You know, I mean, and even with the, even just regular inflation, food prices have probably doubled in the last year. So what's going to happen? You, you can't print money to pay for food stamps and because printing money causes the food prices to go up. And exactly with inflation... They they can't increase the size of the checks. They've frozen the cola on Social Security, things that people paid into. Uh, pretty soon, the welfare check or the Social Security check or the food stamps aren't going to be able to get you the food you need. That's right. You know what? I'm going to sell my gold and my silver, Alex. I'm going to sell my gold and my silver when someone of an important position in the government stands up and tells the American people the truth, that we have to cut the budget by an enormous percentage, and that we have to, re therefore, everything is on the table. The military, Social Security, Medicare, social programs, Department of Education, everything has Absolutely. to be. Absolutely. Porter. There's no, way to make, there is no way to make these numbers work without real, real cuts. Absolutely. Porter Stansbury, End of America video. Dot com, end of America video dot com. Thank you so much for spending time with us. I hope you can come back very, very soon. Anytime, Alex. I love your show. Amazing. Let me say bye to you. For centuries, silver has been used as a powerful natural antibiotic. And as a listener to this station, you probably...